So I was well on my way to uh, doing another video for you when uh, I realized I need a number of spare parts for this kind of new to me old chopsmith. And so while I wait on those parts, I thought I'd go ahead and share with you something I wasn't going to share with you. You probably recall that I bought a cordless WEN track saw. Uh, battery operated is the only cordless WEN tool that I own. And I bought it more out of curiosity. Well, after since owning the tool and kind of digging it, um, I went ahead and decided to go check out what other cordless tools were available from WEN. I mean, it seems kind of silly if I'm going to have their charger and a couple of their batteries if that's the only tool of theirs that I own. And they have sanders and a few other things I really had no interest in. But the one that caught my eye was a biscuit joiner. Now, there's a corded WEN biscuit joiner that several people on YouTube have reviewed that I don't think looks all that great. Um, in fact, it looks an awful lot like one of the Harbor Freight biscuit joiners that I've looked at in person and has not, has not impressed me. But this one, uh, as a tool only without having to buy batteries, came in at a pretty decent price, so I thought I'd give it a try and uh, you know maybe report back. Now, here's the fascinating thing about it. Just like the track saw, this thing is very, very close to the Makita. Uh, I, I'm assuming that when just ordered, a, or the folks at when just ordered a bunch of Makita tools, checked to see if there were valid patents on them, and then just went to town because, man, is this really close. I'm sure it's nothing at all like the actual quality of the Makita product, but as far as the design, it's relatively faithful. So what do we have here? Uh, you've got a what is essentially a right angle grinder that has been outfitted with a 100 millimeter diameter, or roughly four inch diameter blade. That blade is carbide tipped and it's got four millimeter thick teeth on it. Uh, that allows it to make the proper size slot for the compressed biscuits. Um, you do want to be sure that you buy decent biscuits. If you're going to use a biscuit joiner, go ahead and buy some from Lamello or um, Freud or Freud if you prefer. There's a few companies out there whose names are reputable. Um, there's a bunch of them out there that are just garbage, that are basically plywood. What you're looking for is compressed red beech. And it's important that the grain run the proper direction. And you'll find that when you buy those, those main name brand uh, biscuits. Now you might be asking yourself, self, why is Scott talking about this and not the Shopsmith biscuit joiner? For, well, for two reasons. The first one being, I can't find mine. It's, it's somewhere. But the second reason is because I don't use it. I don't like it. My biggest frustration with the Shopsmith biscuit joiner is that it easily does all the joints that I don't need it to do. It will give me a great edge-to-edge -edge joint. I don't need that. I have plenty of strength without a biscuit in an edge grain to edge grain joint. Think about building a tabletop or or even coming together, you know, at a right angle with a long grain against the long grain. You don't need a biscuit. Um, you could do dowels. You already have that with your shopsmith tools, and doweling jigs are super inexpensive. Where I might need a biscuit joiner though is let's say I'm building a bookcase and I want to make a joint somewhere in the center of this vertical side panel. It is almost impossible to do safely with the Shopsmith biscuit joiner. With a biscuit joiner like this one, I can easily do it. And this is one of those situations, just like a track saw, where a big project, it makes sense to bring the tool to the project and not the project parts to the tool. So there's where a handheld circular saw shines because it's so much easier to work with a sheet of plywood or melamine if, if the plywood is stationary and the small saw is moving. So let me pull this battery out and let's place it here on this, this oh, again, some of the mechanics of this. So we've got a, an on off switch. This is a little bit stiff, I will say, in messing around with this, I, I don't like the stiffness of this. Now, if you lock it in, uh, it stays locked until you depress it. Very similar to a right angle grinder. 
Uh, you've got a blade that will then plunge out of the base and a fence that'll pivot down to several different angles all the way to 90. Now, at 90 degrees, that fence will allow that blade to cut to the center of roughly a three-quarter inch stock. If you're, if you're cutting slots in anything other than that, though, you're gonna add the auxiliary fence to this, and that goes on by pivoting this fence up, back to there, and then sliding this fence on. Now you can see that there is a rack. It's a straight gear, and on the back of this fence, there's a, a pinion, and those parts will slide together like so. And then you can use the knob to raise and lower that fence. Now, one of the things that, that looked like a concern to people with the, uh, the corded version of this was it was possible to lock this with the fence out of parallel with the blade. Well, I'm playing around with this. I could see how you could do that. So before you lock it down, I would suggest that you apply some pressure against the side where the fence locks. At that point, it looks awfully parallel to me, but we'll check that here with some plywood to see if we're getting slots that are parallel with the face. Uh, additionally, we have stops here preset. Biscuits come in a couple different sizes. Number 20 is the most commonly used. 10 is a little bit smaller. Zero is a bit smaller than that. An S is even smaller. This has got a little turret stop that'll stop at all of those points. Um, you've got a scale here so that when you are moving that up and down, you can uh, get that engaged at the position that you think you're going to. And let me see what that scale says. Right there it says half inch. I don't know. I don't know what that is a half inch from. From the top of the blade, the center of the blade? I don't know. I'll have to play with it. I'm going to set it at three eighths of an inch though. We're going to lock that down and we'll make a quick cut or two here in our plywood. And let's make sure those are locked in. Listen to this though. Uh, it's relatively quiet. Much quieter than I expected. But here, let's... Uh... see looking at those slots are they parallel to the plies they're parallel to the plies I mean that's a decent cut now in real life you're gonna want to have that clamp down in real life you're gonna want to be very careful with this uh, this has got kind of a rubberized non-slip surface on the face uh, I'm always still more happy having a positive stop against the side or but let's say I wanted to make a cut in the face of this, as I just said, is difficult to do with the Shopsmith biscuit joiner. Let's uh, pull this face off. And now with that, set like so. With a straight edge on here, let's uh, go ahead and make some cuts as if we were gonna do, let's say a bookcase, and we'll just plunge straight into the face. This is exactly the kind of cut I can't do with the Shopsmith biscuit joiner. At least I'm not comfortable doing it. <laughs> All right, straightforward. Can you even see that? There you go. So 
I don't know. I think it's going to be able to do the things I need from Biscuit Joiner. Um, I, I obviously, this is so premature. I can't tell you that this is the tool for you, but you know, considering I can use my batteries with it that came with my saw, I think I'm, think I'm really happy with it. We'll see. I'll report back. In the meantime, make it a great day.